Okay, and I think we're ready to go. So what I wanted to do today was to um, do a quick overview in how we could quickly design a deck for you guys uh, using um, our program, Real-Time Landscape Architect, and by adding a large pergola into the deck. So what I wanted to do was just go over that with you guys today. And uh, just before we get started, I wanted to just quickly uh, mention that if you do want a design from us, you can get go to our website at www.bluechipdecks.com and you can also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and of course here on YouTube where you can find all of our information and fill out a contact form and get in touch if you want to design or if you want to build. So having said all that, let's get to our design screen. So let's flip this over. And I already have the house in here like usual, so we can save some time. And now we're going to get started on, this is just a random house I built just before I started this stream. So I'm going to do a two-tier deck. And we're going to throw a nice pergola on top of it, on the second level, is what I kind of have planned. And a lot of people... Um, so we have actually uh, in our pricing guide, which you can download on our website. Uh, so if you go to our website on the on the first page, there's um, uh, a place where you can download uh, the pricing guide. It's actually called. So you can download it there, and in that guide, there's actually a bunch of pre-designed pergolas that you can just you know choose what selection you want, what kind of pergola, and they come in a different set of uh, like pre-sized. Um, form so 12 by like pretty standard stuff like 10 by 10 12 by 12 14 by 14 and 16 by 16 so and they're pre-priced too to to kind of go on a deck so it gives people a, an idea of what things look like and it also gives them a, a design so actually I'll, maybe I'll just quickly show you guys what one looks like um, just so you know if people go looking so this is just gonna be if you went on the website and download the pricing guide. This would be one of the uh, this would be one of the pergolas you could do. There's five different ones and it shows the slat pattern on top and it shows obviously a 3D and then here in this area this is where you can um, uh, select the end detail. Square is obviously included and then these ones are just a little bit more expensive because they're obviously a little bit more work and then here is just the pricing and we have them in treated wood, cedar and then maintenance free which is an all aluminum pergola which are pretty expensive and generally the maintenance free ones are for you know commercial use or people who really want to just build the the last deck of their life and just kind of get something that's going to last like pretty much 50 years so let's get back to what we were actually doing so one of those pergolas you could just select for your deck but for now we're going to just finish building this deck so privacy sc <clears throat> privacy screen of course and again I've said this before in um, some other videos where I like to do the privacy screen always on the upper level some people don't want it um, but at the same time I don't think people really understand the function of the privacy screen of course it's to you know gain privacy but uh, especially here in um, Winnipeg and Manitoba and in the new developments there's not very many trees that have grown in or there's not very many people kind of living around you so you get a lot of wind so it's actually a really good tool for wind protection. Um, I pretty much offer uh, this a privacy screen on the upper level by the door for every single house uh, or deck that I design, especially in new developments. It's a great place to kind of put your barbecue to find a home for it and it's good because generally your neighbor is also very close to you and could also have a very high door so it's just kind of an awkward situation when they're just kind of looking into the back of your yard or you know kind of while you're sitting there maybe cooking or eating <laughs> and just having your neighbor you know look down on you so I always recommend getting them um, some people have told me before they, they didn't want it uh, but most of the time they actually say after the fact we should have got it so anyway uh, we can always go back and change it actually if we um uh, our railing system that we use on our wood decks at least and this is actually for our wood decks only so um 
for our wood decks to change out the privacy screen and the and the railing isn't actually all that hard because it's the exact same system but if it was something for like a maintenance free deck then you'd need a whole new system to do because the um to do it because the posts would have to be totally changed out okay so we're gonna swap this to cedar tone we're gonna do actually let's do a cedar deck today yeah cedar's nice um people often ask me uh, you know they have a trouble tr dis deciding between cedar and and treated wood, and uh, they you know the cedar is more expensive. It's actually quite a bit more. Um, actually, cedar these days is starting to rival prices of like maintenance free decks. So you know a lot of people have that question. Well, why don't we just go for the maintenance free at this point? Which they should um, in a lot of in a lot of circumstances. But um, there are people who really just enjoy the look and the smell of this kind of uh, a project. Um, the advantages to cedar, people are you're going to probably ask, well, why would we go with cedar? There are a few advantages. So advantages to cedar are it's um, it comes, you know, very finely milled and it comes kind of pre-sanded. So it's got a really nice finish. It's generally a higher grade of lumber. And it's not like exceptionally better than uh, the treated wood it's still like a number two but it just seems to be a lot nicer uh, when you put it down um, for fine work so if you have fine detail work it's actually much better than treated wood because it's also pre-dried okay what am I doing here Hold on, let me, there we go it's also pre-dried these post spacing was way too high so if you do decorative work it's not going to um, change shape on you uh, and twist most of the lumber that we have well pretty much all the lumber we get dimensional lumber for decks is number two spruce that's pressure treated and um, when it dries and loses its water content it likes to uh, go back to its original shape because it's been pressed into place uh, when it was kind of banded together so you know you're obviously going to have a big problem when you when it dries out so if you can go with the cedar I don't know why I'm doing this right now I'm kinda just doing things all out of order I don't know why I'm gonna do this barbecue we're gonna stop this stop this madness okay let's do the stairs this is what I wanna do stairs let's do five foot stair let's start focusing on what our battle plan is actually let's do a little bit bigger we're gonna do some nice stairs here Oh yeah, there we go. We're gonna do a little area here. We're gonna get rid of this rail. You don't really need a handrail in this situation. Actually, I would actually pull these both out. It would be not necessary. Only need a handrail after three rises. After over two rises. So that's two. One more rise, we need a handrail. Now we're gonna do a nice wrapping stair here, really make this look attractive. Attractive. I want to do. Uh, I got to do the whole thing. We're gonna have a post in the corner, which is gonna be kind of annoying, but whatever. Let's see how far out are we? 16 feet. Uh, we can pull it in a bit. I think it's a little far. 15. Yeah, there we go. Okay, sixteen foot nine, so we gotta do foot four ish. So I'm just trying to figure out right now where I'm gonna set my posts for my pergola so they can be kind of um roughly uh center in the right spot. We can span um we can use twenty foot lumber to span this this pergola so I'm actually gonna get going and actually drawing in my pergola posts so what I do is I just use the box tool here and I'm gonna just create a custom object and for the posts dimensional lumber is usually about um, five and a half inches by five and a half inches by the length so I'm gonna get rid of the rail and then we're gonna just place in our posts for now so copy paste we're going to throw this in the corner here, just like that. OK, 
copy paste. And we don't really need them right there because we're going to attach to the house in this in this case. So we only need two posts, but, but I'm going to do a third actually to support the privacy screen here. So I need to actually draw another line just to figure out where this post is going to go. So 15, so we're going to go seven and a half. Just like that. Okay. That looks good. Okay, so now we're going to just, we've got our, our all of our posts set. We're going to just hit L. And that is, um, I think the, it stands for like, and it means like object. So it just highlights all the liked objects. So if you have anything you create in that in that sense, like a, like a box, it will automatically highlight them all. So now we're going to just build this up. And pretty much most pergolas are around like, nine to ten feet we're gonna bring this down a little bit though and it's gonna be like that I'm actually gonna sneak one more post in here just to make this look symmetrical because I'm gonna do another privacy screen on this side and I'm just kinda going with this I don't have a plan for this deck this is literally just me on Friday during quarantine designing a deck for you guys and showing you guys how to do it because it's actually a really awesome thing to know how to do and to be honest most people um, and most contractors cannot do this very well they don't understand the idea of flow they don't understand the idea of transition zones they don't understand um, the idea of kind of uh, you know where to um, position space where you can have kind of separate areas like eating and um, kind of lounging space so that's why you should really take extra special care when you do stuff like this. Uh, I don't know if I really like this post here, but it has to kind of go here. Maybe I won't do it like this, because that just kind of gets in the way. Maybe we'll do this. Just a nice wide open stair like this. That's pretty inviting. Yeah, that's probably better. Then we have a good view. That's better. So I'm going to put my railing back up. There we go. Okay. So that looks good. So we have all this in place. The deck is pretty much ready to go in terms of um, its layout. I have to just adjust this a bit more. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so this is all done. Um, basic layout is done. Let's throw some furniture in here and just kind of define our zones. So upper area is going to be as usual. I actually have, uh, there's my barbecue there. It's going to be, you know, right outside the door. I like to usually have the barbecue very close to the door. Um, and I don't like to have it against the house. So it's not going to turn the house black because last thing you want to do is be scrubbing your stucco or repainting your stucco. So, you know, close ish to the door. Um, something like this is good. And uh, it leaves some space for, you know, maybe a planter here that we can put in in a second. And then here we could do a little mini bistro set, I think would look nice. So what do we got? Uh, we got to go and do our furniture. I need to find a high table. I got a high chair. I need a high table. High table time. <laughs> okay, so something like this. There we go. That looks nice. Okay. Just like that. And then I shrink this chair just a bit because I shrunk the table a bit. So we're going to just do it like this. And this is going to be spun. Nice. I think I'm going to just add a 
wine bottle on there to make it look really good. So if you really want to kind of wow your clients, you just do little things like that because it just kind of, you know, makes it look really at home when you do the design and you send the video and they kind of laugh about it. And it's true. I mean, it makes it look kind of more kind of a, a you know, like it's kind of yours. So there's our wine bottle. And the furniture's up there, so let's put our pergola in. This will be our lounge space. Um, so we're going to have to do another box. I'm going to just grab one of these, actually. And we're going to make the rafters. So we can change the color. If you want to make it for visualization purposes, you can just change the color to help you see because it's you know the cedar color on the cedar is hard to it's hard to see everything easily and this is too long something like this is what we want like that yeah Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, that's not what I want at all. I'm going to change the height of this. And so for um, our rafters, we're going to do a 2 by 10 rafter. So it's bigger than normal, but uh, you want to go set that to about 9 inches if you're going to scale it properly. And we're going to just move it up. Okay, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to just rotate one of these like so on a 90. And these are going to be actually sitting on top. These are going to be sitting on top of this. So we're going to go up. And we'll just ever so slightly notch them in, and that'll dodge the window. So what you want to do here, actually, and I've explained this before, is that um, what you'd have to do if if we didn't have floor framing here, because this will be a second story, so you're going to have a band of uh, framing kind of right here, floor framing, so joists. So when you platform flame a, frame a house, you're going to have your, your main floor platform, and it's going to have a rim joist around it, so it's something to bolt to that your floor joists are butting into and then your walls are going to be built on top of that and then supporting the second floor is going to be another platform which is going to be you know another rim joist with the joists um, of the second floor so that's a structural point where you can bolt into so you have to know where you can do this and where you can't so you can't just randomly bolt something to your house anywhere um, unless you know where the studs are which is kind of challenging when you're um, have a stuccoed house but if you know where the where the floor is, and generally that's pretty easy to find by even measuring on the inside, uh, it's it makes it pretty easy. So that's why if um, I'm doing something like this, uh, you generally want to hit the floor framing. And if you can't, you can always do like you could do posts, like we could do posts like here. We could do a post at the back and then just another kind of a two ply. This is called a box beam in this sense. Um, you could do this against the house. I mean, it's kind of cleaner when it's done this way, but, you know, you know how it is. Okay. Now I'm going to line these all up. like this and then I'm gonna have too many now but that's okay let me just drag these over and we're gonna have to space all these other ones correctly nice oh and this one's too high there we go 
Oh, okay. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna just toss two more, one on the edge here. I'm not gonna line all these up perfectly, just cause that's gonna just for time's sake. Because I don't want this video to be too long, and I don't want to be, you know, boring you guys with just spacing these out. But generally, what I would do is we'd space them out obviously perfectly when we build it, uh, because obviously you're gonna want it done perfectly when it's done. But uh, it actually doesn't even look too bad when it's like this. And, and I kind of got lucky here, so very lucky. And that one's high again. Why are you doing this to me? There we go. That's good. So I need just one more. I'm gonna just do this here. We're gonna pull this to the back, and then it's just gonna be some. This would be the, called the ledger board, and this is where these would all connect to. So that's why I added that in the back. These would all be toe screwed or bolted into this board, and that would be the connection point. And then this board itself would be bolted into the floor framing. So in case you didn't understand that. So now we're going to hit our L again. They're all going to highlight. And we're going to change this to cedar very quickly. Not like I used to do it one by one when I didn't know what I was doing. So look at that. Bam. That's a pretty nice looking spot. So I got to just make some adjustments here. This is going to be, um, so in this, in this situation, um, we normally do an outside mount railing. And maybe I should quickly show you what an outside mount railing looks like. Uh, well, okay. It's basically mounted on the outside just like this. So it's bolted to the rim joist. So it's bolted um, through the back side here. Uh, in this case, since the posts are going to be in the way, we'll actually have to change the style. And when you have a pergola, you have to change the style. So the placement has to be on the inside. So that means you have to notch around these posts, which is actually a huge pain to do when you're building the deck. Uh, it actually, I don't think it makes it any stronger by any means because um, you have to use a bracket. We actually use a specialized bracket called a Titan post bracket. They're pretty expensive. So when you do um, a pergola upgrade and there's a rail that butts into the uh, these parts of the pergola, it's uh, a pretty big um, upgrade because for every single post, uh, every Titan bracket is about $70 and then they have to be installed too and they take way longer to install than um, the normal railing, like outside mount rail. So it's a bit of an ordeal, but you know, it's worth it. You gotta do it right and then once it's done, it's done forever and then you'll be happy. So this is the deck. Let's toss some lights in and make this look extra, extra sexy. We're gonna go for our standard high point light. I'm gonna do one light or two. Let's do two. And we're gonna do them pretty wide. So when I do these videos, I don't even bother going back and kind of editing them. I edit like the video, like the intro video and stuff, but I never actually go back and look at them because I actually hate hearing my voice and watching myself do this on video. So I just kind of like cringe and hit the upload button on YouTube and just, you know, I think it actually helps people a lot when they watch this kind of stuff. I mean, not many people watch them yet. Ho hopefully one day someone will, but, um, it's just kind of it's just kind of hard to put this kind of stuff out, especially when you don't do this every day. So I'm practicing, <laughs> practicing and getting better, a little bit better every day, right? That's the idea. Okay, those look pretty symmetrical. We could probably bring these in a bit more. Okay, that looks good. I like the double lights. Double lights on this big span looks good. So I didn't put any railing in the front. So it uh, what this does it it really makes this open and inviting, and it lets you um. Uh, have no railing in the way of this kind of den area we're going to create and then we're going to do our lights here Just like this like this okay and then we want to do a really nice 
sectional area over here. I think I have actually a sectional built. Yeah, I do. So sectional like this. And then we're going to do a fire pit, of course. No pergolas complete without a fire pit. I got some plants in there too. Other fireplaces, what do we want to do? I always do that one. Let's do a different one today. Let's do... Oh, these all kind of look... Let's do this one. This one's a little interesting. I was going to do a privacy screen here, but I think the railing actually looks better. You don't want too much. You don't want to be shut off too much from the world. Okay, we're going to do that there. And I want to put some plants in. Plant. 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 Nice. Yeah, that looks good. I like it. So it's a pretty big area down there, but uh, I think that's all we're going to need. And this is a nice space. We could actually do a much bigger couch in here because, you know, we've got actually a huge bottom level. So now let's throw another, this other bottle here. Maybe these people are drinkers. Probably are. It's not, with it, people always beware of people who have a nice deck. They're often, they like to drink. It's not a bad thing. They just like to have fun. It's all about having fun. Okay, that looks good. I like it. So we're going to throw in some quick landscaping. No, I don't want you. I want you. It's making me select this. I want this. Yeah. I'm just going to do a quick path because I'm running out of time here. I've got a webinar to get to. But yeah, so I think that's pretty um, much, you know, if you wanted to do something like, uh, you know, design a pergola for your deck, this is a good, uh, this is a pretty big deck here. So this is a pretty nice option for someone with probably a newer home. It would look really good on a, on a new kind of modern house. You could do this in, um, you know, what I like to do if this was a maintenance-free deck is I would do the pergola and cedar, or we could do a maintenance-free pergola. It's just a, a pretty big cost up front. Um, but you could do the pergola and cedar, which eventually turns gray, and then do the rest of the deck in kind of the maintenance-free gray or kind of more modern tones, and it actually looks amazing. So even when it's the cedar color, it still looks amazing. It just looks very, very sharp. So that's a good alternative if you didn't want to get the uh, straight up maintenance free pergola. I gotta switch this up for this. Do our turn, and then we're gonna do uh, this quick. Anyway, so the pergola, you know, no shame in going with the cedar pergola if you're going with a maintenance free deck. So on the next video, maybe I'll do a similar situation to this, but maintenance free, and we'll do a, a different configuration. Been wanting to do a three tier deck to see what that looks like. And I want to just put some trees in here. Let's throw some plants. I think in front of this here will look good. I'm not going to use these plants, so I'm going to switch this up to a shrub. Something like, what do we want? Some kind of crazy. Bob, Bob Ross crazy. That's crazy. Nuts. That's a little too crazy. Too crazy. We're going to go a little less crazy. There we go. That looks nice. And then here, I'm going to just do some little plants. Let's do a tree in the yard. Boom. Boom. I'm going to do a white tree. I like doing a tree with white blossoms in this program. It just makes it look super nice. Oh, yeah. Kind of the same size. Uh, maybe not. That looks good. And here, 
feel like we're just missing something, so I'm going to just throw some small cedars in here. The Italian cypress. Maybe not here, but actually right here on the back. This will be our privacy screen. Ish. Because they're not very big. Okay, anyway. So that's it. That's the project for today. Um, I'm going to do a quick video re rendering on this too, so you guys can watch that as well. So our deck's totally done. This is a two-tiered deck, cedar with deck lights and a large decorative pergola um, with a privacy screen on the upper level. If you guys have any questions and you want to get in touch with me for design work or if you want to book a consult or even a deck, just check us out on our website, www.bluechipdecks.com. Um, or you can contact me or check out our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can contact us through those apps as well. And have a nice night. Bye.